Yes, sir, Your Honor. All right, I'll bring the jurors in. Here. Jurors entering the courtroom. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, and Mr. Stroll, I think we were... <laughs> I had just called Lexi Molinaro, Your Honor. All right, so Lexi Molinaro. you'll come all the way to the front. And if you raise your right hand, the clerk will administer the oath to you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. All right, ma'am, if you'll come right around this way for me. Bail will show you where to sit. And you can adjust that microphone as needed, and just be sure and speak directly into it. Keep your voice up so we can hear uh, everything you say, all right? Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Strollo. Thank you, Your Honor, for pleasure of the court. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Ms. Molinaro. How are you? Good. Could you please state your full legal name to the jury? Alexandra Leanne Molinaro. Okay. And are you related to Phyllis Molinaro? Yes. And who is she? My mom. Okay. And you, do you know who Michael Dunn is? Yes. When did you meet Mr. Michael Dunn? About 2006. Okay. Where was that at? My brother's graduation. Do you remember where your brother's graduation was? What city? You don't have to give an exact uh, place. Jacksonville. Okay. Um, any animosity between Mr. Dunn and your mom back at your brother's graduation? No. Okay. Were you also present for Mr. Chris Dunn, your brother's uh, wedding in 2012? Yes. And that was on November 23rd? Yes. <laughs> do you also recall meeting Mr. Dunn that night as well? Yes, I do. Did you have discussions with Michael Dunn? Um, not very long. I know we said hi, but okay. not very long. Let me ask you this. Was there alcohol served at the wedding? Yes. Okay. And how old are you? 18. Okay. Were you drinking? No. Okay. <laughs> when you were talking to Michael Dunn, did you, how, were you across the room from him? Were you standing there close to him? Um, I wasn't like really close, but I wasn't, I was pretty much right Normal talking distance? Yes. Okay, okay. Any type of strong odor of alcohol while you were talking to no. Michael Dunn? Not at all. Any slurred speech or alcohol impairment issues? No. Okay. Did he have any trouble walking? No. Okay. And where were you seated once everybody went into the reception? Um, it was the front right table. Okay. And prior to that, were there wedding photos with the wedding party and family taken? Yes. And were you in those photos? Yes, I was. And we've kind of see, saw some already. Any type of animosity between Michael Dunn and any of your family members? No. Even though he's the ex-husband? No. Okay. Any issues with anybody at the wedding and, and Michael Dunn that you saw? No, not that I saw. Okay. Did you see Michael Dunn drinking or having a drink in his hand? Um, I saw him with the toast drink, and that was about it. Okay. Did you see him continually going up to the bar, anything like that? No, I didn't really pay attention to who was drinking and that. Okay. And at some point, did you have discussions with him about his puppy? Yes. Okay. And was that when he was leaving? Yes. Okay. Did he show you pictures? No, he showed my mom pictures. Okay. Were you there? No, not when he showed the pictures. Okay. How long did you talk to Mr. Dunn before he left? Um, it was just a bye real quick. Okay. And again, when he said goodbye, any slurred speech? No. Was he walking funny or seem impaired by alcohol? Not at all. Did he have a strong odor of alcohol as he spoke to you? No. Was he ever impolite or anything like that to you? No, he was very polite. Did he seem to be in a good mood? Yes. Did he seem to be happy to be at his son's wedding? Yes. Okay. Um, was there any animosity when he left his wedding? No, not that I could tell. Did he leave because there was a fight or anything like that? No. And your, your biological father is obviously not Mr. Dunn? No. Okay. Were there other in-laws at that wedding also? 
meaning other family members, Mr. Dunn's family, your mom's family? Um, my mom's family there was, and I'm not sure about his family. Okay. At any time during the wedding, was there any type of anger or animosity between anybody and Michael Dunn? No. How about during the reception? No. Was there music playing? Yes. Okay. Was there a DJ or a band? It was a DJ. And was he playing any type of hip hop or any kind of music like that? Yes. Okay. Was it loud or not blaring loud, but was it normal wedding music? Yes. Okay. At any time, did you see Mr. Dunn storm out of the reception area? No. Did he ever tell the DJ sitting right behind him, turn that off? No. Okay. No further questions, Judge. Cross. Ma'am, how many times in your 18 years had you ever seen Michael Dunn prior to the night of that wedding? Um, about two or three times. That's it? Yes. Is it fair to say you didn't know much about him at all? No. That's like, not fair to say? No. Like, I, I don't know that much. Okay. And had you seen him again since that time until today here in court? No. Ma'am, do you know anything at all about what happened with Michael Dunn after he left the wedding reception? No, I just know that he left and he went to the gas station. You live here with your mother, is that yes. correct? Did you receive any phone calls or overhear any phone calls from Michael Dunn or Rhonda Rauer asking you all to take care of their little puppy? No. Your Honor, only an objective hearsay in the way the question was phrased, Your Honor. Well, it's, she's answered it, so it's overruled. Is that it, Ms. Cohen? It, yes, sir. Any other phone calls between midnight and the following day? No. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. May she be excused? Yes, yes Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Thank you. Next witness, Mr. Stroller. Travis Oliver. Travis Oliver. If you'll come forward, please, sir. And right before the clerk, if you'll raise your right hand, she'll administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right, so if you'll come right around over this way for me. And, Detective, you just keep your voice up, speak right into the uh, microphone. Okay. Mr. Stroll. Thank you, sir. Please, could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Travis Dwayne Oliver Sr., O-L-I-V-E-R. Okay, and how are you employed, sir? The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Okay, and are you a homicide detective? Yes, I am. And were you one on November 23, 2012? Yes, I was. Were you called out to aid Detective Musser in this case? Yes, I was. Okay, without going into too much detail, did there come a time where there was a issue about child safety locks with the red SUV. Yes, it was. Okay. Do you recall the date that you went out to the warehouse to check it? No, I don't have a recollection of the actual date. Okay. Did you fill out a report, sir? Yes, I did. Did you know you were coming here to testify? Yes, I did. Did you bring your report? Yes, I did. Go ahead and look at it to refresh your recollection. Please don't read from it as it's not in evidence, but let me know when you refresh your recollection, sir. I, Arthur, uh, supplement number 10, that date is not documented in that supplement. I believe it is in, it's in Detective Musser's supplement. Do you have Detective Musser's supplement? Yes, I do. Go ahead and look at Detective Musser's supplement and then refresh your recollection. help if you look towards December 7th, 2012. December 7th.
There's no listing of that in his report either. Okay. So without recalling a date, do you recall it sometime you checked the car with technician uh, Karen Smith? We went to the car on several times. We went out there with Karen Smith, mm -hmm. and we went back there again with Detective Whit Whittlesey. Okay. And do you recall that day also is you checked the door locks of the red SUV, the back child safety locks. Is that that's, correct? That's correct. Okay. Can I have defense 23, please? Sir, does that look like one of the child locks from the red SUV? Yes, it does. Okay. And is that an accurate depiction of how you looked at it and found it when you were with technician Whittlesley and Smith? Yes, it is. Can I go to your defense 24? Is that also another picture of that red SUV door, the child lock? Yes, it is. Is that also accurate in the way it depicts the way you found it with technician Smith and technician Whittlesley? Yes, it is. Can I go to defense 25? Does that appear to be the other side of the red SUV child lock door? Yes, it is. Is that also accurate the way you found it with technician Whittlesley and te uh, technician Smith? Yes. Defense 26, same questions. Does that yeah. accurately reflect the door with the child locks? Yes, it is. Would that actually reflect the way you saw it that day? On that day, yes. All right. And 27, please. Is that the door to the back SUV that would be opened and the child lock would be on the other side? That's the... The red SUV. The back door to the red SUV. Yes, the, the child lock would be on the inside of the door, yes. Correct. And 28. Same question. That's just a close-up of the same door open. Is that correct? That's correct. 29. Another of that door. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 30. Now, do you recognize that in Defense Exhibit 30? Yes, I do. Is that the same back seat you sat on? when you guys discovered there was a tripod underneath that seat? Yes, it is. Did you ever move or do anything to that tripod or manipulate that tripod at all? Yes, we did. Okay, what did you do to it? We sat in the seat. And no, no, hold on. Did you manipulate the tripod? I didn't mean did you sit on the seat. Yes, I'm telling you how we manipulated the tripod. <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead. We sat in the seat and attempted to pull the tripod from underneath the seat from the position we were sitting in. Then, after we were unable to pull the tripod from the seat in a sitting position, we got out of the car, opened the rear passenger door, and pulled it from the, the end of the seat and then were unable to move it out of the car. Okay. Can you tell me where you put in your supplement everything you just testified to? I was meeting with the, the, the evidence technician, and we were under the impression at that time that the evidence te technician documents what their actions are since I was meeting with him. Okay, but you were the one that sat on the seat, right? Yes. Did Detective Musser sit on the seat? No, he did not. Did the evidence technician sit on the seat? No, I did not. And you didn't put it in your report, is that true? No. Once again, we were under the impression that the evidence te technician was documenting that. Understood. Would you say that's a true and accurate depiction of what the underneath of that seat looked like? Yes, it is. Did you leave the tripod where you found it after you sat on it and tried to wiggle it? Yes, because there was not any evidence of our crime. That's okay. Can I go to Defense 31? <clears throat> That's the other side. Would that also be accurate, that the tripod would be on the complete other side of that seat? That's the other side of what? This what is it the other side of? This is the other side. Do you recognize this as the left side, the left rear side of that seat underneath it? I never viewed the, the seat from the left side of the vehicle. Okay. So you're saying even though you recognize Defense 30, you don't recognize Defense 31? That's correct. Did you ever have Detective Whittlesley take pictures of underneath that seat? I never instructed Detective Whittlesey on what to take pictures of. Okay. Did Detective Musser instruct Detective Whittlesey to take photos? No, we never instruct our evidence technicians on what to take photos of. So it's not your job? No. Nothing further, Judge. Cross? Yes. Detective Oliver, isn't it true that on the Friday evening of November 23, 2012, you never knew the child locks could no. be relevant? No. Or on the day after that? No. All right. So did you specifically request any of the evidence technicians to test or otherwise look at those child locks? No, we did not. Before that red Durango was taken from the gas station? No, we did not. Let me show you what's been marked in the evidence. I need just one minute of State's Exhibit 48. And I'll ask you, sir, the photos that Mr. Strolla showed you isn't how you operate the child locks, is it? No, it's not. People don't open their back doors and operate child locks with that little black latch, do no. they? No. 
They do. When yeah. you when the child locks are activated, you have to open the vehicle from the outside. And they're there for children not to open them from the inside of the vehicle. Right. So those latches aren't what someone would move to show whether or not they were on or off, are they? No. In fact, in States Exhibit 48, it's just a little button along the driver's side door that somebody could hit accidentally if they didn't know it was important, isn't it? That's correct. And so one of those buttons along the left is what operates those child locks, isn't it? That's correct. And because y'all didn't know it was important, you didn't bother to document the position of it before you guys had the car towed from the gate gas station. That's Is that correct. correct? That's correct. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Can I leave States 48 up, Judge? Sure. Detective Oliver, that's the locks for the windows, correct? Yes, it is. Nothing further, Judge. May he be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Cord, may he be excused? He can, Judge. Thank you, Detective. You're excused. Well, Actually, you know what, Judge? Hang on. <laughs> I was going to say, if I can rewind, I, I am going to keep him under subpoena subject to recall, Judge. Okay. Well, then, and I do have one more question. Mr. Schroll asked you, that's the locks for the windows. There's multiple locks on that handle, aren't there? That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's all that is. Okay. Well, you're excused for now, but subject to recall. Um, next witness. Yes, sir. Don Mays. Mr. Mays, if you'll come all the way up to the front front for me, please, sir. And if you'll raise your right hand, the clerk will administer the oath. We selected him, and we had a fairly long project up here. Okay, and what was that project for? Uh, it was working for the uh, Naval Air Station. Uh, it was uh, software development. Okay, and are you in that line of work? I am. And obviously he was in that line of work? He absolutely was. Okay. And how long did you guys work together on the Navy base on this contract? I think it was approximately two years. Okay. And did you guys both live up here in Jacksonville? We, we stayed up here uh, during the week. We normally would come up Sunday night and either leave Thursday night or Friday. Okay. When you said we, did you actually travel in the same vehicle with Michael Dunn? Um, sometimes, most of the time, not. Um, but every now and then, just depending on the logistics of the week. Okay. And where did you live at the time? I lived in uh, Satellite Beach, Florida. And do you know where Mr. Dunn lived? He lived in Port St. Lucie. Okay. And that somewhat close together, was that fair? Yeah, about 60 miles distant. And if he went north, he would actually drive past you at Satellite Beach? Yes. Okay. And you guys would carpool at times? Abs yes, we would. Okay. And did you develop a friendship through your work environment? We did. Okay. Um, through those two years, did you become good friends? Yes, we became good friends. Okay. And you basically worked daily together while you were here in Jacksonville on the Navy contract? Yes, we worked in the same queue back to back. Okay. And did you go flying with them? I flew with Mike, yes. Okay. And how often or how long did you work with Michael Dunn? How long? Um, well, the, the two years. Uh, we became friends, so we stayed in contact, not everyday contact, because our jobs had us going different places, but, um, but then we worked again, you know, somewhat recently together. Okay. And when was that? When did you start working again with him? Um, I would say back in, and we, uh, back in uh, somewhere in 2011. Okay. And how long did you work with him since 2011? Once we, that started? Um, for a couple of years, two so years. It was 
full-time positions together? We were not working full-time positions together. We were working on the, uh, the early learning system uh, in Tallahassee. Oh, it was remote work in Tallahassee, for, uh, early learning system in Tallahassee, but it was remote from Melbourne. Okay. And did you guys travel together, work, do business together? No, we did not. We, we just worked in the same uh, project together. Okay. And that was for several years? Two. Two years? Okay. And in that, did you guys have to work with other people in your software networking community? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. And how often or how many people? Um, there is probably 40 developers on that project. Okay. And was it a pretty tight-knit group? I mean, you guys had to work very close together? It was divided into sections depending on your specialty area and our section. Well, I was actually in a different section of the project from Mike, but uh, I had worked we're in his section, so so we were still all somewhat close. Okay, and at that point, you're still not only work friends but personal friends. Yes, yes. Were you close with Mr. Dunn? Yes, I was. Friend? Yes, definitely. Okay. And how long how long have you worked with him since 2011? I believe. Did you was it just those two years? Yes. Okay, and in those two years with that group, did. Mr. Dunn have a reputation for peacefulness among that group. Oh yes, he was uh, a calming influence in that group. Okay. <clears throat> did anybody ever talk, without going into what they said, did anybody ever talk about him with you when he wasn't there? Yes, of course. Okay. I mean, talked about him, that has negative connotations, but <laughs> referred to him, yes. And in a positive way. Oh, yes. Oh, People yeah. were friendly with Michael Dunn? Yeah, they were friendly and all very positive because, like I said, I had moved from that group, even though I knew the guys in there, and we would communicate, and, of course, they would... Uh, you know, they, we talked about different people on Project, and Mike always, always came up uh, okay. and very positively. Okay. And at some point, did Michael Dunn actually move up to Satellite Beach where you had lived? Yes. And then you guys still kept a close friendship even living in Satellite Beach together? I had moved to Melbourne Beach, which is about okay. 15 miles south by then. Well, I heard he was moving to Satellite, so okay. I left. And you guys are still, you said, within 15 miles? Yes. Is that closer than Vero Beach? Oh, yes, yes. Did you see each other off at that point as personal friends? We did. Okay. Judge, I have nothing further. Mr. Guy. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the project in Jacksonville, that was a two-year project? I believe it is approximately two and years. And you and the defendant were in Jacksonville about five days a week? Um, yes, between four and five, yes. All right, and for a period of two years? Mm -hmm, approximately. And, and the defendant lived at that time in Jacksonville on the south side of Jacksonville, right? Yes. And off a road called Southside Boulevard, right? That sounds familiar. That's correct? That, yes, I mean, that sounds, I, I, I don't remember exactly what his address was, but I knew he lived over in the South Side area. And you believe it was off of South Side Boulevard? Yes, sir. All right. How often did you see that, and that was 50, well, that was 1995, right? Through 97. 95, 97, 96, 98, but that time frame, yes. Okay, when was it that you reconnected with him? Um, well, we kept in loose contact all along after that project, um, and then we got really close again, probably in... I would say 2010 or something, but we'd see each other maybe once every few months in that duration of years. What you were referring to as the loose contact? Yes. You'd see him. So that was a period of maybe 15 years? Um, 97 to 13. Yes, I'd say about that. Yes. And again, how often would you see him then? Um, when we, we, we communicate through email, and we'd probably see each other every couple of months of that. All right. And then more recently, how often would you see him? Say since um, 2011 to 2012. Uh, you know, more um, often once a week, sometimes more. All right. And you've never been in a situation with him where he was sitting next to someone listening to loud rap music from another vehicle, have you? Uh, no, sir. All right. And you were not at his son's wedding on November 23rd, 2012? I was not, no. You were not invited to that? No. All right. Thank you, sir. May he be excused? Yes? Had you ever met his son? Microphone. Had you ever met his son, Christopher Dunn? Um, I don't believe I'd ever met his... I, I, I met different family members. I don't remember meeting his son. Okay. 
Did you ever meet his ex-wife, Phyllis Molinaro? Not Phyllis. I've met a different ex-wife. <laughs> but not Phyllis. No. Did you meet anyone from the Molinaro family or Ann Austin, Phyllis's mom? Not that I know of, no. Nothing further, Judge. May he be excused? So excuse, Your Honor. Mr. Gosh. Sir, don't ask that he um, be subject to recall. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we need you to stick around. Yes, sir. Possibly for recall. Thank right. you, but you're free to go for now. Uh, that's it for the day, isn't it? That brings us to a conclusion for the day as far as witness testimony is concerned, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, I was right. We finished a little early today. Uh, we will resume again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And um, the, uh, I, well, we'll just resume at 9. So, you can leave your notes. We'll watch over those for you. Don't discuss the case among yourselves or with anyone else. Um, continue to live in our little bubbles. And have a nice evening, and we'll see you and get some good rest. We'll see you in the morning.